did it because it will hit the PL account. Your net income will be 3.2%, not 7.93% of the outstanding balance. And in fourth year, when the credit loss is 7,000, it will may go to negative as well. So this is an abrupt pattern of income on a loan under the incurred loss model as we are using today. Now, under the expected loss model, if I expect a 10,000 credit loss from the very inception, in determining my effective interest rate, I plot that as well in the future cash flows. So what I'm doing is 125,000 the future cash flows, 10,000 is the expected credit loss. So net I'll receive in terms of income, 25,000 minus 10,000, 15,000. And if I spread that 15,000 over the term of loan, using effective interest rate method, it will give me a return of 4.96%, an effective return of as against 7.93% uh, in the incurred loss model. Now, what is happening is, I am just distributing my credit loss over the term of the loan by reducing my interest income over time. This is aimed at giving some stability of earnings to the financial institutions. But ask yourself, what will happen if you use that kind of a model? Now, nobody will know or realize that financial crisis will come and go. And since you have built up your model such like that, the financial statement and the income statement uh, will not reflect what is the actual credit crisis have gone in that particular year because you have used an earning smoothening exercise. So if we had used this earning smoothening exercise uh, initially, now the credit crisis might not uh, uh, become so apparent in the financial statements as we see it now. But would it be justified? Because, you know, accounting is like a mirror. It should reflect actually your face, you know. And whatever is the economic reality, it should reflect that economic reality in a most transparent manner. Now, that kind of uh, spreading of credit loss might be seen as not clearly communicating the economic reality in the year in which it is happening. You know, but, you know, that is the uh, model which is being proposed and in most likelihood uh, this model uh, may take a, a shape after certain modifications and will be implemented in years to come. Now what was the problem with that model is that because effective interest rate calculation and developing this model operationally or theoretically it's very looks very easy but operationally it may pose a lot of challenges. The systems of uh, accounting information systems have to be modified and then when the estimates change of expected losses from one year to another, so people have a lot of reservations about how it will be possible operationally and practically. It will add a lot, lot complexities in practice and it will itself become a problem to apply. And then, keeping that, that in mind, the ISB formulated an expert advisory panel to look at, into these aspects. And also, the expert advisory panel also endorse that observation that operationally it will be very difficult to apply. And then US FASB also have a different approach towards credit loss impairment. So they've worked together and come up with a joint document which was issued in January 2011, very recently, still based on expected loss model, but aimed to reduce complexities. Now the credit loss, which is spread over through the interest income, is not through the interest income. What they're saying now is, Okay, we still want to do the expected loss provision, but let's change the methodology a little bit so that it's easy to apply. Now what it see, says is that you divide your whole book or whole pro portfolio into two categories or into different categories onto different portfolios. So you do not evaluate the loan on individual basis, but on a portfolio basis. And then you categorize all portfolios into a good book or into and a bad book. A good book means all loans and all portfolios where you expect regular repayments, good portfolio, performing portfolios, and a bad book which is NPLs, non-performing portfolios. Now for good book, 
what you need to do is you, ex you may develop an expectation. What is your expected credit loss from the whole portfolio? Say uh, it comes to an X amount. That this is the expected credit loss from that portfolio over time. So you divide that expected credit loss over the term of the portfolio. For example, the portfolio, the weighted average life of the portfolio is five years. So you divide that by five and book uh, the uh, one year charge each year. So you can divide that expected loss on a straight line basis over the weighted average life of the portfolio so that a journal provision or a journal allowance is built up on a good book each year. Again, this may be difficult to apply because you would need an expected loss amount initially to come up with a yearly charge that you would like to make as a journal provision each year. But still, uh, ISB feels that expected loss estimates have to be made and should be incorporated as a journal loss provision on a portfolio basis so that there is a buffer in place before the, to absorb the expected credit losses and the good book should not wait the time till the loss actually incurs. And when the loan becomes bad, it will be transferred from good book with the provision made on an expected loss basis to the bad book and then on the day it is transferred to the bad book, all the expected losses, no matter they are, then you cannot divide the expected loss over the term of the loan. Whatever is the future expected loss should be incorporated uh, the same day the loan is transferred from the good book to the bad book. So in a good book, you will depreciate the loss, I would say, uh, or allocate the loss like depreciation over the term of the loan. But the day you transfer that loan from good book to bad book, you have to book all the expected credit losses. Now again, you can say that how and on what basis expected credit losses will be determined. The standard carries some methodologies, some guidance on developing models to determine the expected credit losses. But those models, are again, will be based on historical experiences, industry data, such as, say, data published by the state bank, in, uh, historical data available with the bank, Again, different methodologies may be applied by different banks and financial institutions to come up with the expected losses. Again, a lot of subjectivity, but still, at the end of the day, you will carry some provision against your good book, which you are not carrying at the moment. We carry only provisions against NPLs. So in terms of business impact, what we are saying here is, undoubtedly, if these proposals are implemented, it will increase the level of the provisioning against the loan portfolios from the current level and that is the intention and also again it will add a lot of subjectivity and diversity in practice because of different methodologies used by different entities and it will may have an element of earning management because this is so subjective that each year you can come up with a revised estimate and that revised estimate and process might be used for management of earning from one year to another year. So these are the challenges and uh, which are there. But again, it's a, this model is a reality and there's most likelihood that expected loss model would take a shape and would be a real reality in years to come. So that was briefly the developments taking place regarding the loan loss provisioning accounting. I think I've gone a little over time, so my apologies for that. And with that, I would like to uh, end the presentation and if you have any question on the expected loss model, you know, please, we are most welcome. Sorry, I, uh, okay. Uh, basically what the expected default modeling in the good, good book versus bad book uh, provisioning thing in my view is going uh, uh, correlating with the probability of default modeling which is currently taking place place within the banks right now in line with the Basel II requirements. So is this something re uh, somehow related with that? That is my question because... Well, uh, uh, yes, because uh, Basel requirements and capital casual ca calculation requirements and accounting